Yeah, that's kind of the moment where everything went sideways for the Cardinals organization, where they went back to being as dysfunctional as they had ever been. And I always thought that the shift from Bill Bidwell to Michael Bidwell marked the end of years of dysfunction, cheap uh, approach to everything football related, treating the players poorly. I thought all that had ended, and it's all come crashing back between the NFLPA survey, the recent Terry McDonough claims made, and we know they're just allegations, but still, just the fact that you find yourself on the wrong side of such strong allegations is not good. And uh, it it just makes me wonder where the Cardinals are right now, and it makes me wonder whether they're ever going to get the most out of Kyler Murray, because separate and apart from anything that they may think that he needs to do to achieve his full potential, the most immediate task, Miles, is recover from a torn ACL that could be something that, that takes a while for him to get back to what he was, if he ever gets back to what he was, given that torn ACL. Absolutely. And look, I mean, his speed, his legs, that is a huge part of his game. And, you know, I'm sorry, but when the former GM of the team is still talking about your preparation, your work ethic, your attention to detail, after all of the stuff that we went through last summer, where the whole contract clause with the homework stuff came out, how is that still an issue? that you did not immediately correct. If I'm a Cardinals fan, and I am not, but if I were, I would be extremely concerned about my quarterback, not just because of the health, but because the former GM of the team who drafted the guy and who really doesn't necessarily need to have anything bad to say about him, but, you know, I mean, he's coming and say, oh, he's a good guy. He's got a nice smile, which, okay. Like, what If we're talking about good young quarterbacks in the league, Right, take take the the three who are about to get big contract extensions this year. You know, Jalen Hurts, right? Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert. Is anybody going to talk about their nice smile when they're talking about those dudes? No, you're going to talk about how good they are on the field, and you're also probably not going to criticize their work ethic off the field. So, I just think that from whatever standpoint you look at it, whether it's okay, the Kyler Murray is not healthy. Or Kyle Murray still has issues with attention to detail that he has to solve, according to the former general manager of the team who was there last year after the whole homework clause stuff came out. That's really concerning for me as a Cardinals fan. And I think it just underscores the fact that some of these teams have to be willing to say, we're not going to give a second contract to the quarterback. That the things that are giving us pause, the things that are causing us to insert a requirement that the player engage in at least four hours per week of independent study, that is the thing that should cause us to say, we're just going to move on. We're just not going to extend him. We're going to let him become a free agent. Remember, it was out there last year, the whole manifesto, the the Ted Kaczynski screed from Agent Eric Burkhardt and the oh, effort yeah. to just agitate and agitate. And because Burkhardt represented both Cliff Kingsbury and Kyler Murray, it put the Cardinals in checkmate. Why not just stand up then and say, sorry, you know, the the report, the report, i.e. the text from Eric Burkhart to whoever reported it was Kyler Murray's not going to play for whatever he was due to make last year in the fourth year of his contracts. Like, fine, don't play. Don't show up. Don't show up. No. That's fine. You, you, you have a right under the CBA. There's always two contracts at play. You're not violating your contract. The CBA gives you the ability to stay away if you choose to do so. There are financial penalties that may apply. There are other complications and consequences, but you do have the right under the CBA to refuse to provide service when you're under contract. Go ahead. We'll, we'll make other plans. We have Colt McCoy. If you choose not to be here, that's fine. But they allowed themselves to get backed into a corner. They felt like they need to em emerge from this with some sort of a win. We have to get a win here. We got to get that. We got to we got to show him who's boss. We're going to give him all those millions of dollars guaranteed, but we're going to get a pound of flesh out of this. It really was in hindsight. It was uh, one of the more bizarre circumstances we've seen. You're either all in with the guy or you're not. You give him a right. contract that says you're all in, at least as it relates to what you're paying him. But then you throw in this clause that if you have any ability to apply foresight to a situation, you know people are going to find out about. You can't keep that secret. The contracts get filed with the league. They get filed with the union. Someone's going to see that. Someone's going to say, oh, 
oh, this is a way to curry favor with some reporter out there that otherwise may be scrutinizing my team. Hey, hey, buddy. Hey, here's this. Have fun. You didn't get it from me. That's how it works. How the sausage gets yeah. made. Here it is. Here's a little favor for you. Uh, and boom, it all blows up and it makes the Cardinals look bad. And, and, and like I said earlier, that's just been the first domino of one after another after another over the past years that make the Cardinals look inept. It makes me feel like they're just lost in the wilderness, and I have no idea when and how and if they're going to find their way out of it. Dysfunctional teams do dysfunctional things, right? I mean, this is a, an organization that has been dysfunctional for years and years and years and years. And the Bruce Arians era was great because it, I think – the way he head coached that team kind of probably covered up a lot of the warts, you know, that we didn't see. So, you know, when they went to the uh, NFC championship game and they had Carson Palmer and they were going bombs away and they were doing all these good things, you know, I, Bruce Arians did a lot for them, but then you get Cliff Kingsbury in there and sometimes they start off hot and then they just get really, really, really cold really quickly. I mean, that fall that they had from being what 10 and two and at the top of the NFC West, and then they lose basically most of their games for the rest of the season, end up as a wild card, and then they come here to Los Angeles and had one of the least competitive playoff games I've seen in a long time against the Rams. I mean, Kyler Murray played horribly in that game, and it was the third matchup against a division rival. There's just no excuse for that. So, I mean, now you know, you're trying to go into the Jonathan Gannon era, and you're trying to have some sort of positivity, and I don't really know how you can do that when – a, you've got the claims uh, that are going on now against Michael Bidwell. And yeah, they have the absolute ability to defend themselves or whatever. But I, I, those claims are not something that you want to defend yourself from, first of all. But second of all, you've got a guy in Kyler Murray who you don't know what his health is going to be going forward. And frankly, with all due respect to Drew Petzing, I'm not really all that excited about what he can bring as an offensive coordinator to the Arizona Cardinals. Now, what 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 are we really supposed to be excited about here from that standpoint? I I, I don't know, man. This is this is going to be a weird 2023 for the Arizona Cardinals. It really is. I I felt like it was a job, Miles, that no one really wanted. And at some point, you have for to say, reason. hey, there's only 32 of these jobs, but but there are 32 of them. But not all 32 of them are desirable at any given time. And you know, Jonathan Gannon will get paid accordingly, and he'll have the job for a few years. And if he gets fired, he'll have his buyout, et cetera, et cetera. But you know, look, th th this is this is one of the things that that I both am fascinated by and frustrated by as it relates to professional sports in general. There's nothing you can do about bad ownership if you're a fan of a right. team. You're just stuck. Jed York, CEO of the 49ers, said it five, six years ago when they were going through that hire a coach, fire a coach, hire a coach, fire a coach cycle when they went from Jim Harbaugh to Jim Tom Sula to Chip Kelly, you can't fire the owner. Yeah. No, you can't. But you wish you could. And the Bidwells <laughs> have owned the Cardinals since 1933. That's amazing. 90 mm -hmm. years of continuous ownership by one family. And, and, and they've probably made a ton of money. Good for them. Bravo. It's the American way. Capitalism. Go make your money. But I, I, I really feel like the Super Bowl appearance to cap the 2008 season, the NFC Championship game appearance in 2015. Remember when Carson Palmer had like six turnovers? He went Jake DeLome on the yeah. field where Jake DeLome went, Jake DeLome several years earlier. Uh, I, I, uh, wow, Jake DeLome. I think those were aberrations <laughs> catching a stray. Jake DeLome really? catching strays. <laughs> but, man. hey, man, it, uh, hey, you know what? I like guys who don't have six turnovers in playoff games. Uh, you don't. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the I point know what is, you did there. The point, I know what you did the, there. The, it happened in the, Arizona the, the, too. The I get it. There's a lot, a lot of things going on here. Right now. <laughs> here's, here's the point. Here's the point. Cardinals fans, uh, this is gonna test, this is gonna test every ounce of loyalty you have. And my nephew, my nephew, is like the only Cardinals fan in West Virginia. And he is oh. rabid and he is diehard and he is unshakable in his loyalty to the Cardinals. And that's what you need. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.